Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how I landed my dream job at Nike at 23 years old. So a quick summary on how I did that. I revamped my LinkedIn. I started cold messaging directors on LinkedIn asking for 15 minutes of their time. One of the people that I reached out to, uh, she gave me an hour and a half of her time and that call went really well. She ended up connecting me with various people in her network and then I started creating this networking pyramid where I would have informational interviews which is multiple people at Nike and then one of the people that I spoke with referred me to the president of Nike Canada. and. The rest is history. So that was basically the process in terms of how I actually got my foot in the door with Nike. I networked my way in and I never applied online to any posting. And I want to teach people how to follow this exact same step so that they can land the job of their dream. So let's get into it. So the step that isn't mentioned here is that you want to hyper focus on the top three companies that you want to work for, right? For me, it was Nike. I was very clear and I was set on the fact that I wanted to be working at Nike. I was working at FedEx. That was my first job after college. I was working in sales and I was very clear that Nike was my next step. And what prompted me to create this video really was that when I landed my first job at FedEx, I applied to over 400 companies and it was actually a referral that got me into FedEx. And I knew that if I was ever gonna search for a job again, I was never gonna go through the same process. I have to be more strategic in how I approach my job search. So this was the exact process that I followed during my time at FedEx to get into Nike. So I was very clear, I was very set on the fact that I wanted to work on Nike. That was the company I wanted to work for. Now all of these other steps do apply. Now the first thing that you wanna take a look at is your LinkedIn, right? Now this is exactly what I did. Um, at that point my LinkedIn was trash. I didn't have a good photo. Um, I, I didn't have a, a summary, none of that, right? So I had to completely revamp my LinkedIn profile. And the reason being is that LinkedIn is your brand, right? Whether you're on Instagram, whether you're on TikTok, whether you're on any sort of social media, social media is your brand, right? So I knew that if I wanted to get into Nike and if I wanted to network with other people within Nike, I had to optimize my profile. I had to optimize my brand. So the first thing that I did, so I'm actually gonna put up the photo that I used on screen during that time, but I had to take a really professional photo, right? So one of the things that I wanted to include in my photo, and research backs this up as well, is that you wanna smile. You wanna communicate that you're trustworthy, you wanna communicate that you're open, that you're warm, and a smile does exactly that, right? So get a good professional photo in. I'm just gonna show my photo today. Now this is not the most professional, but it shows my personality, right? Like it shows, it shows exactly what I stand for. I'm a big basketball fan and it's something that conveys a lot of personality. Now this wasn't my photo when I was applying to Nike. So with your photo, you wanna smile, you wanna look professional, you wanna look welcoming. I hate to say it, but people do judge on appearances. Right, so put your best self forward. It is only gonna help you. The next thing that you wanna do is invest into a headline, right? Now, my current headline right now, the current framework for that is sales at Nike. Now, what a lot of people do in their headline is that they just mention their job title. So my job title is technically account executive, right? And then they mention their company. Now that, to me, is boring right? You want to get creative with it, right? So what do I do? I do sales at Nike. I'm an account executive. Now one, two, three keywords about myself and what I do, right? So account executive, B2B sales, strategy. So you want to obviously mention your job function. You want to mention some keywords about yourself and your job title. And the last thing that you want to do is that you want to present a one liner that says, okay, cool. Like this is what I do. So this is exactly what I do. I tell stories through shoes, right? It's a cool one liner. It, uh, it really gets it. I think it causes some people to get curious about, okay, like, what do you mean stories through shoes, right? So it causes people to ask questions, but it's intriguing, right? So you want to, you, you want to mention exactly who you help. And, um, if you, if you can mention how you do that as well, include that in your headline, right? So this is your headline. The next thing that you want to do is invest into your summary. So for my summary, what I've done is I've included a story about myself, right? I've included why Nike has been so important to me. I've been very sports focused and athlete centric. Um, so I included a summary that 
really is just a representation of who I am so that the other person that's reading my summary can get an idea of who I am and my personality, right? Now, over here in your summary, you want to mention some facts about you, what you've achieved, what you've done, your experience, and say it in a way that is authentic to you, right? Say it in a way that is communicated in your own voice. So this is my summary over here. Uh, and then when it comes to your work experience, what I've done is that I've mentioned my responsibilities but I've also mentioned some of the things that I've achieved. So what a lot of people do is that they only mention responsibilities, right? And it's just bullet point after bullet point about what they do. Now, I've taken a different twist to that. I want to introduce people to, okay, like this is exactly like what I'm doing in my role, but this is exactly what I'm achieving as well within my role, right? So this has been my role for the past two years. Previous to that, I was in another role at Nike. I just separate out my responsibilities between these bullet points and these check marks over here, right? So something to keep in mind, uh, you want to be extremely, I would say achievement focused. People want to know what you've done, what makes you unique. So don't just mention your responsibilities. The next thing that I did was I started reaching out to directors on LinkedIn, right? Now, the reason why I'm reaching out to directors, managers, VPs as well, I throw them in there as well, is just because they are able to influence hiring decisions, right? If you reach out to, let's say, a junior account executive or an associate consultant, right? Yes, it is important to reach out to them because you can get a gauge for their day to day. But the people that are really able to influence hiring decisions and really connect you to a really strong network are people that are higher ups within the company. So the first thing I did is that I literally typed in Nike sales in the search bar. So I typed in Nike sales on the search bar. I filtered by people. And this was three years ago. These are the people that come up. But three years ago, I typed that in. And then there was a category sales director in New York that popped up. Right. And I just I, I started shooting my shot. Hey, my name is Ash. I'm an account executive. I understand that you've been at Nike for the past 16, 17 years. Would love to understand your world. And let's hop on a Zoom call for 15 minutes if you have some time. Right. I'm going to throw up the, the, the message that I crafted at, at that point. It was coming out of a place of genuine curiosity. I was doing sales at FedEx. I was curious about what sales at Nike actually looked like. And I wanted to understand their world, right? So I crafted a personalized message asking for 15 minutes. We hopped on a call and then you want to come prepared. You want to have a list of questions ready. What has your experience been like in X amount of years? Let's say 16 years. Um, how did you find that role? Uh, tell me about the culture. Tell me about the people. What motivates you to wake up every single day and look forward to work? Would have been some bad times at work, right? Like, you want to know the intricacies of everything about this person. The way that you want to structure these calls is that you want to mention a little bit about yourself in the beginning, and then you want to make the conversation about them, right? So, hey, my name is Sash. I went to Western University. I'm currently doing sales at FedEx. Thank you for jumping on. I'm really curious about what your world looks like at Nike, and I want to pass the floor on to you to understand your world a little bit better, right? So have those questions ready. Do your research about them ask questions based on their LinkedIn profile before you hop on a call with them and then ask away, hey, what's your experience been like? Uh, tell me about this role. Uh, what have been some really good times? What have been some really bad times? Tell me about the people. What does your day to day look like? What advice do you have for me? People want to know that they are valuable to other people, right? So as soon as you get someone else to talk about themselves, they start to like you. And I capitalized on this psychological concept, right? So when I hopped on a call with that sales director out in New York, we talked for an hour and a half. We just clicked, the conversation flowed. And at the end, she was the one that told me, Sash, I really like you. Let me refer you to three other people within my network. And I'm going to pop up the group chats on screen where she connected me with three other people. It was directors, it was account executives. And that was really the start of my networking pyramid that was being formed for people at Nike, right? You want to ask to be referred to another person in their network. You're not asking for a job. You're not asking for a referral for a job. None of that. Like I asked to be referred to another person. Okay. And you want to repeat this process, right? So have your list of questions ready, hop on informationals, make the conversation about them. 
and then continue to be asked to be referred to other people within their network. And this was the process that I was repeating time and time and again, right? And I would track everything. I would track who I was talking to. I would track what their position is. I would track who they referred me to. This is exactly how you network with people. I had a really good conversation with this other director from Nike, and then she referred me to the president of Nike Canada. And after hopping on a call with the president of Nike Canada, we hop on Zoom and I start off these informationals in the same way. Hey, I just wanna introduce myself. My name is Sash, I went to Western University. I'm an AE at FedEx. And then all I see is just a hand going up, indicating for me to like stop talking. So I stopped talking and she said, listen, Sash, the previous person that you talked to, she's been my best friend for 10 years. If she's vetted you out, then I've automatically vetted you out. I have two questions for you. What's your favorite shoe? And where do you see yourself in five years? That was really the pivotal moment where I'm just like, holy shit, this networking thing is absolutely real. And after I answered those two questions, she told me that the organization, Nike Canada, had an internal field sales position that was open. And she asked me for my resume. And that was the start of getting my foot in the door with Nike. So it takes us to this point right here, which is the resume. So I'm just gonna throw up an updated version of my resume. This is currently what it looks like. This is inclusive of my Nike work experience for the past three years. So the first thing that a lot of people leave out on their resume is their LinkedIn URL. I'm gonna throw up an article and some research backing the huge advantage that you have if you include your LinkedIn resume. So make sure that you have your LinkedIn resume, I got mine listed right here. When it comes to your work experience, you wanna make sure that your bullet points are achievement-based, are results-oriented. A lot of people just mention their responsibilities, and if you really wanna stand out, list your achievements. So this is something that I've tried to do in my resume. So for example, negotiated and closed an $18 million sale of 300,000 units, mentored two new team members, Awarded a maximum award, youngest hire, exceeded FY21 goal. Now, not everything is achievement based because I do want to throw in exactly what I am responsible for just so that the other person can get a gauge of what I'm actually doing at my job. But this is super important. Don't just list out your responsibilities, list out what you've done. The next thing that I want to focus on is tangible skills. So a lot of people on their resume will say they're open-minded or they're customer-centric or they collaborate well with people. Amazing. The problem with that is you cannot prove that on your resume unless you actually have a real experience that is connected with the skill that you're listing. It's very hard to prove. So what you actually want to list out over here is tangible skills. Are you familiar with Salesforce, do you know how to speak Spanish? Do you know how to code in Python? List a tangible skill over here. And just going back to my resume, this is what I tried to do. I do mention cross-functional collaboration, but I do have an experience over here, which is negotiating and closed an $18 million sale. Essentially what I'm trying to say over here is that I was collaborating with the director of finance, the director of operations, the director of merchandising, to make sure that this was a reality, to make sure that we achieved this goal, right? So this is something that I would bring up in my interview. If I was interviewing with the company, uh, a lot of the skills that I mentioned over here are sales related just because I come from a background of sales for the past five years. And the last thing I wanna mention is, is education. Now, my previous resume, I always thought that it was super important to list your education as the first thing on your resume. Uh, list out the coursework, list out your GPA. And after you start to work for a little while and you get some experience, you start to realize that education is not as important because people are more inclined to ask you what you've done, what your experience is, what are your skills. And this is the reason why that I recommend listing your education last, right? Now, this might be different if you're a new grad, if you're getting your first entry level job, Yes, list out your education just because your experience for the past 18 years has been in school. So list out your education and list out what is relevant to the job that you're applying for. So for example, if you took a finance class, for example, and you're applying to 
of finance role that is entry level yes it might make sense to actually list out what those courses are if you had a case competition or anything like that that would hold more weight than the course that you took because that is something that you've actually done my point being depending on the role that you're applying for education can be important but for my experience applying to sales education hasn't been important for me right so just recognize what role you're applying for and then go from there and lastly when it comes to the interview you want to be doing so much research when it comes to the company that you're applying for that you have to blow them away with your competence demonstrate competence and i'll give you an example so as soon as i learned that i had an interview the first thing that i did was i researched everything that there was to know about nike and nike was going through a strategy change at that point three years ago called consumer direct acceleration where they were investing a lot of resources into its own channels so digital retail its own stores so what i did was i gathered so many articles so many news articles and i really wanted to understand what nike was doing so that when it came time for an interview i could demonstrate my competence to that hiring manager or that vp or that recruiter a really good tool for this that wasn't available to me three years ago but is available today is perplexity now what it is it's almost a search engine like google but it provides an answer like ChatGPT with cited resources so i'll give you an example i want to know everything about nike's consumer direct acceleration strategy and this is the best way to gather data and summarize that data. So what it's doing is that it's gathering real resources and real articles, and it's providing a summary of all of those different articles. And you can click on these articles to actually view the information. But right now I have a great understanding of what consumer direct acceleration really meant, right? The importance of direct to consumer, the importance of consumer data and analytics, right? So use perplexity when it comes to researching the company that you're interviewing for it is super powerful the best thing that you can do is demonstrate competence when you hop on your interview the next thing that i did when i was interviewing for nike is that everyone that i had an informational interview with that i met i followed up with them and i let them know that hey like i have an interview with nike are there any pointers is there any support that you could provide now that i'm actually in the interview stage and i kid you not almost every single one of them replied back to me providing so much value to the point where there was one person that actually provided the framework and the potential questions that i might be interviewed with what really was the game changer during this entire process was this point right here without this i'm not too sure if i would have got the job right Every single person provided value, whether it was, hey, Nike is, is the type of company that really likes decks. So maybe it might be a good idea for you to create a presentation during your interviews. Add someone else that provided the potential behavioral questions that they might ask me, right? Which led me to my next point. All of those potential questions that might be asked, I wrote down practice answers to. And I would practice saying them. I would practice how I would respond to them and you want to be doing this. There's not a lot of people that actually invest the time into this, but if you really want to nail your interviews, write down the answers to behavioral questions, to potential questions that you might be asked. There is something beautiful that happens when you write down things compared to just reading something or typing something out. Write down the answers and practice. And the next thing that I did, one of the people that I spoke with, he recommended me that I created a presentation. So I actually created a presentation of... Number one, everything that there was to know about Nike at that moment in time in 2021, what their strategy was, again, to demonstrate competence. Um, I created a few slides on who I was, my experience during FedEx, and what I've achieved, and what I'm really looking for and wanting to achieve you know, during my time at Nike. And I created, it was a 25-slide presentation that I presented when the hiring manager or another manager would ask me, hey, like, tell me about yourself. I said, hey, like, is it cool if I shared my screen? And then I went into this presentation. So the next point I want to mention is practice. Practice, practice, practice. It's the name of the game. It's almost like going to a gym and training your biceps. The only way to get bigger biceps is by putting in the reps over and over and over again, right? So practice your presentation. Practice writing down those, those answers to those behavioral questions. Practice saying those answers out loud. You want to be investing time over here to make sure that you nail your interview. So this next point, be creative. So for example, after my presentation, when I was told, tell me about yourself, I said, hey, because Nike is a storytelling company, 
I have a couple of stories to tell you through my Nike shoes. And I literally popped up each one of my shoes on screen and I told them a story. Listen, like this is the shoe that I lost 40 pounds in. This is one of my favorite shoes of all time, the South Beach ones. And I'm showing these shoes on screen during an interview, right? This is the Pegasus. Like this is my favorite shoe that I run in. So be creative, right? Even at the end of the presentation when they were like, hey, like is there anything else that you would like to share with us? I memorized the Nike Dream Crazy campaign, right? With Colin Kaepernick. I recited every word in this Nike campaign. That was my eight mile Eminem last freestyle mic drop moment. I recited every word in this Dream Crazy campaign and I told them, listen, this is my favorite Nike ad of all time. I'm super committed to this and uh, I wanna show you, you know, just how much this brand means to me. So be creative. And the last thing that you wanna do is just include a thank you note, guys. Like these are people, these are real humans that you're talking to. Send a thank you note, thanking them for their time. It goes a long way. Again, research backs this up that employers are more likely to hire people that do send thank you notes. So maybe an hour or two after your interview, thank them for their time and mention something specific that they mentioned to you during your interview. It really goes a long way. So this was the entire process that I followed to, to get my job at Nike. Was it easy? No. But when you invest a little bit more time into being strategic about your job search, you can get access to phenomenal roles. You can get access to your dream job. And working at Nike was, was always a dream to me growing up, right? And the fact that I got to live out that dream, I want other people to experience that as well, right? Work does not have to be this four letter word that you wake up to every single day and you hate what you do. Work can be enjoyable. Work can fire you up. So follow this process, guys. It is a system that you can replicate in your own job search. And I hope this was helpful. So appreciate you guys joining me. Hope you guys learned something new. And uh, until next time, my name is Sash. Peace.